You often hear it said that Alzheimer's disease is a family disease, and that is true. What scientists now know is that the disease begins decades before symptoms start. We are going to join three brothers who are on a journey to honor their father, and we're going to unlock what happened to their dad's brain in the decades before he was diagnosed. Yeah, the first one here, Howard Hospital. They are getting an early start. There is a plan. There is a plan. So let's scout out an area first. It's a day they will never forget. I'm excited. Yeah, it's going to be something. A journey they wished they didn't have to make. Home plate, Griffith Stadium, sat right here. The Klein brothers, Jeff, David, and Michael, have found home plate inside a Washington, D.C. hospital, or at least where home plate used to be before Griffith Stadium was torn down more than half a century ago. They have traveled from their homes in Atlanta, boarding planes with their special delivery package to carry out the wish of the man who was the center of their lives. First words he ever said that I heard from everyone in the family was, throw it here. It was there from the beginning, Richard Klein's love of sports, of baseball. They're one of the original franchises. His childhood was spent at Washington Senators games at Griffith Stadium, his Lutheran minister father receiving tickets for free. <laughs> Richard Klein was faithful in every sense of the word to his team. They weren't a very good team. To his wife and boys. The four boys, I called them. To his job as a federal judge. But the soundtrack of his life was baseball. Braves games, oh my goodness, he loved Braves games. We're all baseball fanatics too. Sandy Kofax, Willie Mays team ball, 81 Mays. Braves. This is passion made visible. This is just the ones that we brought. I think I've got another dozen or so back home. There's Mickey Mantle, there's Joe DiMaggio. An incredible collection by any standard. <laughs> The surprise 60th birthday for this soft-spoken man who avoided being the center of anything came not long before his diagnosis. I had the same passion for uh, uh, baseball and stratomatic baseball. And Dr. Alan Levy with Emory Brain Health Center diagnosed Judge Klein with Alzheimer's. The only foundation the Klein boys had ever known began to crumble. He'd offer me a drink and I'd say, no, I'm fine. He'd offer me a drink again a couple minutes later and then again, a couple minutes later. How Richard Klein would come to forget the game he loved most is because of Alzheimer's disease, which began at least two decades before his symptoms. The two major pathologies of Alzheimer's disease that define this are these amyloid plaques and the neurofibrillary tangles. They form in the brain decades before the symptoms begin. Dr. Alan Levy, director of Goizueta Alzheimer's Disease Research Center at Emory, says that the two proteins that form the pathological deposits, amyloid and tau, are both in our brains throughout our lives, serving important functions. These are eight different brains at eight different stages. At some point, these proteins go rogue and begin to form microaggregates, seeding further deposits in the brain, and then spread like wildfire. The amyloid by itself doesn't seem to cause symptoms. Um, mm. People are absolutely normal walking right. around with a brain full of amyloid. It seems that once um, something happens that we don't really yet understand, the amyloid triggers the brain to start producing these tau neurofibrillary tangle deposits. When those, when those start developing, the brain cells really become sick and the brain the synaptic connections start to degenerate. Okay. That, we think, is really the hallmark of what causes the brain to start expressing symptoms. Here is basically when symptoms began, mm -hmm. and here's eight years later. It doesn't change a lot. No. So what that tells you is all the damage is really done before symptoms begin. Part of the challenge in cracking the Alzheimer's code is that having a brain filled with amyloid and tau does not mean you will get the disease. If you look at the brains of 100 people who have died who at death had normal cognition, you'll find that about 85 or 90 of them actually have different pathologies. 
including Alzheimer's pathology. In fact, we know again that many people will have the pathology of any of these by themselves and never develop symptoms. While his brain was being damaged by these proteins, Richard Klein could still play catch with his grandson years into his diagnosis. He died at 71. Oh my God. Leslie Klein is here to talk about her husband and her sons. Richard's autopsy showed not only Alzheimer's disease, but also pathologies of Lewy body dementia and ALS. It doesn't mean at all that he had ALS. We know he didn't. TDP43 is a brain protein that accumulates in certain cells in the nervous system with ALS. Lewy bodies are yet another protein aggregate, and when it deposits in the brain, it's a pathological hallmark of Parkinson's disease. These Lewy bodies and the TDP43 protein aggregates often coexist in the brains of people with Alzheimer's disease. Scientists now understand that these and other neurodegenerative diseases frequently show considerable overlap, including ALS, frontotemporal dementia, Parkinson's disease, vascular dementia, and Alzheimer's disease. Aging is the obvious common denominator. A breakthrough in one area could impact all. I guess my main question would have to do with the hereditary impact with my sons. Sometimes these diseases run in, um, in families very strongly. Um, I don't see that pattern. Uh, in, ri in, ri that. in Richard's yeah, okay. situation, so I don't think your sons are at particularly high risk. All of us in, are made up of half our mother, half our father, so mm -hmm. we know that you know those genetic influencer, influences are getting passed on, but it's not in a simple cause and effect way. Um, okay. You know, by far um, the biggest thing contributing to their risk is going to be aging. You got the bag. You got the goods. Remember that special package? It contains a bit of Judge Klein's ashes. His wish was to have them sprinkled at the stadium where he came of age. Final farewell. Sprinkling where the field used to be and at an iconic oak tree that hung over the stadium. Later that day, they sprinkled more ashes at Walter Johnson High School, named for the greatest Senators player ever. He's coming with us, and uh, some of him staying at each spot. There is only one way this day, this trip, can end. The Nationals may not be their team, but this is the Klein's pastime one whose history reminds them it's not about being the best, it's that loyalty and love of a game, of each other, lives on, even through loss. And that when your dad asks you, you take him home. One of the difficult lessons of Alzheimer's and any disease really is appreciating and enjoying our lives when we have our health. In Judge Klein's family, his boys are best friends and continue their love of baseball. And his wife is traveling as they had planned. That is how the people we love live on through us.